Hey, everyone. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I appreciate your time. And uh, I'll be talking today about the importance of giving feedback. And you may notice I've got effective in uh, brackets there. And that's because the most important thing that I want everyone to take away is that giving feedback is the priority. Effective feedback will make it so the message connects more with our audience, but ultimately we need to give feedback. And you may think that, you know, it's so silly. Give, of course you need to give feedback. But when we took the DISC profile test, what I received was uh, the working score of an ICS. Uh, and so they had mentioned because the influencer, I'm really attached to the relationships of the people, my team members as a sport leader. I What I struggle with is when people give me feedback. I tend to take it as personal criticism, be a little sensitive towards it as opposed to viewing it you know, solely as it relates to the task. And in the same light, when I'm giving feedback because of how I perceive it, I tend to walk on eggshells and, and, you know, try not to hurt their feelings because that's how I feel. And maybe that's not even true at all how they really feel. Uh, but so I, I took this time, this presentation to do some research on, well, how can I be better? How can I grow? How can I be a, a more effective leader uh, and learn about, you know, feedback and, and giving proper feedback? What I learned first is the current systems that we have. The current feedback systems, as you'll see here, are, you know, as a sport coach, uh, athletic director, general manager, the most common feedback, you know, system that we have is verbal feedback, especially in coaches. It's it's uh, verbal conversations. And in these elite sports settings like an NFL game, right, we, there can be over 60 feedback messages in just one game. And so that really encompasses, you know, how often this feedback is coming in. And, you know, we hear maybe words like adjustments and things like that. It's coming from these conversations that we're having with our athletes. I specifically picked these two pictures of NFL coach Andy Reid and player Travis Kelsey just to show the broad range that can happen in a game with these conversations that occur. You can go from one one time a player screaming at the coach to, you know, celebrating a huge win. And it's all in this spectrum of, you know, things that can happen during the game between the relationship a player and a coach has. And because of the different types of interactions we have, we need different approaches. There's not a one size or one way to go about it. You know, sometimes maybe as a sport leader, a quick decision needs to be made. It needs to be an autocratic decision versus, you know, maybe more of listening to the player. What do you, what do you need? How can I help you? That type of a servant approach, right? So there's that huge spectrum of, and it needs to be a spectrum because there can't be a one size, uh, you know, way to do it. The next thing I learned was the timing. And as we probably all know, you know, you, you complete your task and usually you get feedback afterwards, or maybe you're making mistakes during the process. And so you're getting that feedback, you know, in that moment, trying to correct the mistakes. Why is it necessary though, is, is was the big thing that I learned. And it's because as a sport leader, we are the ones who are, are, are driving the culture of our organization. And how do we do that? It's it's how we communicate. It's how we give the feedback that to our to our players, to our team members. What do we want to see, right? Promoting the good behaviors, the good performance, correcting those mistakes. And through doing that, we are molding the culture of our organization. Because, you know, the way that we communicate is so important in, in how we go forward as an organization, it can be beneficial or negative. You know, the way that we give our feedback, the manner, if it's not right, we may, instead of promoting the learning environment that we're trying to achieve as a sport leader, we can have a negative effect. Maybe the way we give feedback, it is actually making people afraid to make mistakes, to take like chances to grow. And so it's really important that, you know, when we're giving feedback, we understand it, that we're, we're molding our organization 
and it can go good or it can be really bad as we influence the standard we're trying to achieve. And the last bit is the environment. And what does that mean? Who's listening? Is it a big group? Is it just one-on-one? -on -one? The environment has a, a like an effect on the way that we, our message is received as a sport leader. But how should we deliver that feedback? Because we want to promote growth in a positive environment. I specifically picked this quote because I really felt that this encompasses how we should deliver feedback. And it might not always happen this way, but the more we're able to, to achieve this delivery, the more effective it will be. Word choice should be deliberate, right? Void of judgment, non-threatening, and provide opportunity for conversation. It's not an attack. It's just, it's feedback. We're trying to correct mistakes where it's factual. It isn't person based on the personality of our team member or athlete. It's trying to just correct the behavior or the performance. And so that that's where uh, me as a person, I always felt it was a attack. But when you use this non-threatening tone, when it's about the facts and we're just, this is what we wanna change. This is what you did great. And then the most important element after that is the conversation. It should be a conversation. What it, what it, here's what I want to see. And then the athlete can come back. Well, this is what I see. And then through that conversation, well, this is how we go forward. We can now become more connected on our mutual goals and to, you know, to just be on the same page going forward. Here are some tips on how we can make our feedback a little more effective that I found in my research. And it starts off with, it is a conversation. Now, not all times, right, can it be a conversation, especially if it's supposed to be a quick decision, something of that nature. But if, if we want it to be effective, we need to hear their side of the feedback that we're giving. And it is a skill. You, it, just like leadership that we've learned, the more that we practice and have these experiences, the better that we'll be in the future. Another tip was... There's so much feedback that you're given. Sometimes you don't even know it's feedback, especially if it's done ineffectively, right? Maybe you take that as an attack. Oh, that was kind of mean what they said. Well, it could have been feedback. They just did it very ineffectively. So maybe if we want to be more effective in the future, we label the conversation as feedback and say, can I give you feedback? Can I talk with you, right? And then as we know, there's so many messages. We need to prioritize the most important ones. And if it's not a priority, we can disregard it. The last part was to verify they actually heard your message. Were they listening? And that can be simple paraphrasing of, yeah, I understand. I got to do this in the future. Because the ultimate goal that we want is, as a sport leader, to show them that we care. That's why we're giving feedback. We want them to know we care. So that way, you know, because we want them to be the best version of themselves for now, set them up in the future, right? Inspire, motivate, encourage the growth. That is our ultimate goal as a sport leader is, you know, we care about you and we want to see you do better. Um, and that's really what I learned the most uh, in giving feedback and how to be more effective. Uh, these are the references that I used. Uh, and this concludes my TED Talk. Thank you all for your time.